Hey, it's Mike here, and today we're gonna look at a very recent study that directly compared the emissions of conventional meat to organic meat, as well as conventional and organic plants, and the results are very interesting, and they're actually shocking to the researchers. They were not what the researchers were expecting. They also looked at another interesting metric, what all of these foods individually should cost if you were to tack on the extra cost of that environmental damage. And because it's just one study, we're gonna try and keep this video pretty short, but most importantly, right off the bat, Happy holidays, the new year is coming up soon, so I hope you have a great 2021. Not to jinx anything, but let's just hope it's better than 2020. We can all agree on that. Okay, so people often see a buzzword on a label and it justifies their purchase of a product that they might otherwise have a negative attitude toward or recognize some negative effect of. And in this case, organic is one of those words that might drive somebody who's environmentally minded to purchase a product that they wouldn't otherwise because they think it's more eco. Is organic actually better when it comes to emissions specifically? Well, let's look at the study. This is out of Germany a little over a week ago in the prestigious journal Nature Communications, which is a sort of sub journal of the journal Nature. Legit stuff. And in terms of the gap in knowledge that these German researchers tried to fill, they say, quote, Also, the agricultural sector is globally a main emitter of greenhouse gases. Thorough economic analysis of environmental and social externalities has not yet been conducted. I'm so sorry. I'd like to formally apologize to everybody that's German. Although I will say this uh, Wuxley vest is, is sort of making me want to hit the Alps. Frau Helga, we have spent too much time on the slopes. We need to get back to the laboratory. I'd apologize again, but all the Germans have probably already stopped watching. What are we talking about again? Oh yeah, they say that they've calculated the emissions based off of life cycle analysis and meta-analytical approaches to calculate external climate costs of food stuff. And the results, which are based off German data, but probably apply pretty well to most Western countries are that external greenhouse gas costs are highest for conventional and organic animal-based products, followed by conventional dairy products and lowest for organic plant-based products. There's a lot to unpack there and we're gonna get to all of the details, but first, Looking at the torrent of articles that are covering this, you know, you got your Guardian and you've got your New York Post and on and on and on. It's not just anti-vegan articles that do this. They just blast out news. Although I will say that when it's anti-vegan, something that is not very newsworthy just gets amplified into something that is allegedly newsworthy, obviously, because people just want to hear bad stuff about vegans. But in this case, it was a very important finding and looking to the researchers and what they told The Guardian in terms of their shock, they say, quote, we expected organic farming to score better for animal-based products, but for greenhouse gas emissions, it actually doesn't make much difference. So as I've mentioned in the past, when you're just lumping organic and conventional foods together, Animal foods, they just blow plant foods out of the water in terms of emissions. Here is the Environmental Working Group's chart on kilograms of food and CO2 equivalents. And the animal products just dominate the emissions. And a lot of people go, oh, those animal products are just so much more nutrient dense, so it's worth it. Well, protein is the thing they're always bragging about. Looking to this, our world and data chart. Nope, actually, things like legumes and plant Plant-based sources of protein are way more eco-friendly, have way lower emissions than all of the animal foods. So it kind of got you beat in all ways, except cholesterol, you guys, you guys win there. Now here is the table of emissions by food type from the study, and there's a lot going on here, but it's shocking to see that the organic meat-based products are slightly higher in, in most cases than the conventional meat-based products in terms of emissions. I mean. Pig meat is pretty much the only one, and I will say there's a confusing additional column there, which is land use change, which negatively affects the conventional column. And if you disclude that, which you really shouldn't, but just thinking about that, it's massively lower for a conventional, and we'll get into why in a bit. But this is where it flips, and this is why you can't just say organic is good or bad, and that's when it comes to those plant foods. And the organic plant foods have half of the emissions on average as the conventionally grown plant foods, which makes a lot of sense because of all of the chemical fertilizers and more fossil fuels and et cetera. Now to directly compare the emissions of animal versus plant products, you can look at organic versus organic and conventional versus conventional. Unfortunately, they threw dairy into another category, so it's 
meats and eggs versus plants. And the results are shocking. For these conventional animal products versus conventional plant products, you're talking about 44 and a half times the emissions per kilogram. Plants destroy here. And for organic, it's even crazier. We're talking about 121 times more emissions for those organic animal products. It's fair to say that because it's by weight, it's a little more dramatic. If you did other metrics like calorie or nutrients, it would be a little less dramatic, but still very dramatic. The researchers explain this plant versus animal emissions difference with one fact that I talk about a lot, and that is the feed conversion ratio of animal products just throwing away a ton of calories. Even when you're growing feed crops for those animals, you're taking up more land, which of course means more greenhouse emissions. And as one of the researchers told the press, the big difference is the simple effect that when you have a field of plants and you eat them directly, then that's the end of the emissions, basically. But for beef, for example, you need 42 kilograms of feed just to produce one kilogram of beef. This huge inefficiency explains the gap. Do you know how hard it was for me to hold back doing a crappy German accent? I am growing. I have grown throughout this video. Anyway, back to the actual study, the researchers say. In addition, we have, quote, emissions from the animal itself through manure and digestion, as well as heating of stables, where those animals sleep, are also relevant factors which contribute to the high emissions of animal-based products. Now, a good portion of this study is not just about emissions, but about externalities and the costs that would be associated with those and how extra costs should be added to these products. And for those that don't know what externalities are, they're sort of like extra costs or effects beyond the point of sale or the actual product you're looking at. For example, if you're a douchebag and you're mean to somebody, the externality of them then being mean to somebody else is how externalities work. That's a bad explanation, but in terms of something like a burger, an externality might be, of course, those emissions or how it's negatively affecting the water supply or how it's taking up land and causing other issues. And you can put prices on those. And what they did in particular here was use the German government's cost of CO2 equivalent. And that value is 180 euros or 220 US dollars per ton. And that's not a US ton, that's a ton or a metric ton. Tane, tani, tana. So using that carbon cost and the amount of emissions for each type of food, they were able to calculate an extra cost that we would charge for these products if we cared about the environment. In other words, if you were to simply factor in the cost of a single externality, in this case, emissions, what would the price of that food be or how much should it be increased by? And they actually have a little chart here, figure one, that shows the greenhouse gas externality cost by food. Again, plants are dwarfed by animal products. And as you can see, based off the emissions being more or less neck and neck for meat, whether it's conventional or organic, you can see that those externalities are about the same. But when you start factoring in the current price and look at the percentage increase as they do in the next chart, you see a little bit less of an increase for organic because it's already more expensive. So if you were to add an extra $5 to something that's $10 already, that's only a 50% increase. But if something is $5 to begin with, that's a 100% increase. And going to the realm of plants, you can see that there's almost no increase for organic plants because they are pretty mission friendly, but then you have about a 25% increase in cost for conventional plants to offset those emission externalities. And what is probably the most important point here is that if we wanna be preventing climate change, these conventional meats especially need to be taxed because when you're thinking about volume, you're thinking about all of those Big Macs and those packaged meats from the grocery store that are really making up the bulk of what people are actually eating. We need to increase the price of those to decrease the consumption of them, to lower the emissions, to help prevent climate catastrophe. So what people are paying at the drive up window is not the real cost. And to quote one of the researchers, again, to the Guardian, the prices are lying. I'm so sorry. At this point, it's like a tick. But that was from a researcher named Amelie, not to be confused with the French movie, who also said climate costs are rising and we are all paying these costs. They are not adequately put on the most polluting products. Some of my OG viewers might have some bells of familiarity ringing in their head because I've covered this topic a little bit before in my interview with Meatonomics author Paul Simon from Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> no, I meant David Simon. That's a, that's a my bad, who totaled up all of the externalities, including things like water and health, and found that a Big Mac should actually cost 13 bucks. 
and I'll link that interview below, but let's get to what I think is a very interesting question here, and that is why did organic fall so short? It's supposed to be the more eco, more restricted way of farming, and it should have less of an impact. After all, they even cover some of the benefits of organic over conventional in terms of emissions, the not using chemical fertilizer, the not shipping feed as far because there are limits within the organic code. You can't be shipping stuff in from Brazil to Germany. And then also just that there are lower emissions to the plants that they're feeding the animals. But they also mentioned that those are quickly dissolved by various factors, including how organic has higher land use per animal. They have lower productivity and they also have a higher slaughter age. So it takes longer for those animals to bulk up. They say all of this, quote, counterbalances or even reverses the described positive aspects of organic animal farming. I've described some of these things before with grass-fed beef and grass-fed of proportion of feed is obviously higher in organic systems. Firstly, you have that three and a half times higher methane emissions for grass-fed cows versus grain-fed cows just based off digestion dynamics. They're just burping more based off of the ruminant system. And then you also have how these animals take 150 to 200% of the time to get to the slaughter weight. So at the end of the day, you're having way more burps per bite or way more methane emissions per bite. And in this study, they did not even take into account how much damage methane does in terms of climate change in a short run, burns hot and burns quick. So with all these factors, it's no surprise that organic fell short. Of course, those organic plants, however, did really well. So it's not a matter of just organic versus not organic. It's what type of organic food you're talking about. And I'm sure different plants even stratify into more positive and more negative. But overall, in this case, vegetables, great legumes, great. All of those plants, incredibly low emissions. Again, just like other labels that people put way too much stock in, like humane and free range and grass fed and natural. Gotta love the natural. Uh, it's just not quite meeting the standards here for organic either. If you care about emissions, that organic label just really doesn't mean anything in terms of meat and other animal products. And to the people who want to be environmentalists who are maybe buying those organic meats, it's time to just reconsider, you know, look at those plant foods beautiful low emissions <laughs> go for it come on all right that's it for today feel free to like and subscribe let me know what you thought about this study and have some happy holidays like the video share it on the page of somebody you know that eats organic meat and uh feel free to subscribe and do the notification things that way you won't miss my videos thanks for watching